It's Monday, November 15th, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. It's two weeks before Barbados transitions to Republic status, and one of the members of the Republican Status Transition Advisory Committee, Solomon Bobolia, said a recommendation had been made for a new charter of Barbados, which is expected to be debated in Parliament. He was addressing the congregation at the St. Paul's Anglican Church on Sunday during the Remembrance Day service. It is expected that this proposed charter, which was drafted by our committee with inputs from Barbadians during our engagements, would be debated in Parliament in November and be, placed, and be in place for November 30th. So we are hoping that this charter will address some of the things that are deficit in the Constitution and which we hope the constitutional discussions in 2022 will address as well fundamental rights and freedoms and, and what it means to be a citizen and what is the role of the state and so on. From today and continuing for the next four weeks, residents and visitors alike will adhere to a new midnight to 5 a.m. daily curfew. But Prime Minister Mia Motley has made it clear that the easing of the curfew is no excuse for persons to abandon COVID-19 protocols. She also said that officials are not contemplating the complete elimination of the curfew until the country records a higher vaccination rate. 66.3% have already taken the first jab, and that's what matters, because people who have taken the first jab are likely to complete it, and they're going to complete in most instances within three weeks. To that extent, we've always said that when we reached a point where we were at two out of three, or three out of four, we would start to take different threshold decisions. We've reached that two out of three. They're probably about... Um, as I said, we'll review in four weeks' time, but we want ultimately to be comfortable to reach at least 75% with a first job and then a second job. We don't see the complete elimination of curfew until we have 75% with a second job. But we've started the process of deconstructing now and allowing persons to gradually get back more control over their activities, recognizing that each person playing their part will allow us to keep going in this direction. Government will continue holding talks with stakeholders in a bid to address concerns on the issue of safe zones. Word of this from Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick. This is a work in progress and we have made some significant progress in this regard, definitely. But we still have to have the stakeholder consultations with the other entities and these are primarily the trade union movement, CITUSAP, and those unions that have members, members within the healthcare sector. And that will happen over the next few days until we are able to get something that has the buy-in of the stakeholders. But I want to report that we have made significant progress. Some of the things that were raised and I would have consulted with the Barbados Nursing Association, the president of the association, when we had the first draft. Um, some things were put forward there. BAMP had already expressed its concerns and submitted a letter, so we tried to address those. And the next step would be to discuss matters with the trade union movement so that at the end of the day, we are all on the same page. Barbados has recorded three more COVID-19-related deaths on Saturday. An 80-year-old female and an 84-year-old male died at the Blackman and Gollop isolation facility, while a 64-year-old male passed away on Sunday at the Harrison's Point isolation facility. They were all unvaccinated. The country's total tally of COVID-19-related deaths now stands at 194. Meantime, there has been yet another impassioned plea for the island's elderly to be protected against COVID-19. It's coming from a manager of isolation facilities, Dr. Corey Ford. In August, we had a total of one person coming into the facilities um, who was 80 years of age. In September, there were 23. In October, there were 42. So far for November, we have 18. And those numbers may not seem big to you, but to me, they're significant. And why are they significant? Because these are the people who are least likely to be able to help themselves. And we will continue to do all we possibly can 
to assist them. But you need to help me. You need to help all the doctors who are working across the system. You need to help all the nurses, all the housekeepers, all the individuals who are working across the system and making wrong things right. I'm asking you especially today, especially today, for all of you have your grandparents at home, for all of you have your mothers and your fathers at home who are elderly who can't help themselves, they don't go anywhere. I'm asking you especially to do two things for me, just two things, just two things. One, if they get ill, get them tested. If they get tested, get them to the healthcare system early. If you get them to us early, we can make the best of it. If you get to them to us late, it is very, 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 very difficult for us to save them. That's now to the latest COVID-19 figures, 216 new COVID-19 cases comprising of 80 males and 136 females were recorded on Saturday out of 1,446 tests conducted by the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the new cases, 43 persons were under the age of 18 and 173 were 18 years and older. 975 people are being housed at isolation facilities and 7,365 people are in home isolation. Barbados has recorded a total of 22,093 COVID cases so far. In other news, Cabinet has agreed to have an Independence Day Road Tennis Knockout competition across the island. Word of this from Minister of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, Dwight Sutherland. And that will play within communities. And we don't want only to, to play at, at, at certain key venues that we know, like, 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 like the Garrison and Dayton Power. We want to play in communities like Brighton, where people are known for road tennis. We have a sporting facility at Ellerton, but the community prefer to play here because that is where they get their joy from road tennis. They, they told me it will not be the same if we play at the Ellerton Sporting Facility. So they want to play on the road at Brighton. That is true community spirit. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. In news from the region, the Antigua and Barbuda government reveals that it is seeking to procure the Moderna vaccine for residents in its fight against COVID-19. More in this ABS News report. We have had good news from uh, Moderna in that they have finally decided to make um, a few million of their vaccines available to Latin America and the Caribbean. I believe they'll be making them available through the COVAX facility, so we're likely to get them at a reduced price, even though they're still expensive and more expensive than the AstraZeneca vaccine. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown speaking on his weekly radio program on Point FM Saturday. The acquisition of 10,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine in the first instance is one of the government's latest measures to boost vaccination numbers while curbing COVID-19 infections. The Prime Minister who received the Moderna vaccine earlier this year says vaccines have been instrumental in the country's recovery. Our hospitalizations and deaths are reducing. So in addition to the protocols and the different uh, measures that we'd have introduced, the vaccines would have, would have played a significant role in reducing the level of, um, of COVID um, transmission. 
And finally, people who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19 have been placed on lockdown in Austria as the country faces a surge in cases. Unvaccinated people will only be permitted to leave home for limited reasons, including working and buying food. More from France 24. Lockdown for the unvaccinated, an extreme measure that Austria's chancellor says he does not take lightly. Our task is, as a federal government, to protect the people of Austria, and that's what we're doing. We're fulfilling that responsibility. If the incidence for vaccinated people is down, it continues to rise exponentially for the unvaccinated. Despite a small protest outside the chancellery in Vienna, the restrictions take effect on Monday. According to the new rules, anyone over age 12 who either hasn't gotten the jab or who doesn't have immunity from a prior infection is barred from leaving their homes, with exceptions for essential tasks like grocery shopping or medical visits. Breaking the rules comes with the risk of a 500 euro fine. I don't think anybody wants another lockdown, so the rules make sense. The restrictions, believed to be the first of their kind worldwide, come amid rising infection levels felt across Central Europe and Germany. Countries where vaccination levels are in the lower to middle range when compared to the rest of Europe. In Austria, about 64% of the population has received both shots, compared to 67% for Germany and 69% for France. More than 13,000 new cases were recorded Saturday in Austria, a record since the pandemic began. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.